Hello and welcome to another Play Better Chess video. So who do you think will win the upcoming World Chess Championship, which uh, begins on November 25th? Uh, so that's coming up very soon. Uh, the two players that will be going against each other are Ding Loren from China and Gukesh Damaraju from India. So it should be uh, a great matchup. Gukesh is a, a pretty young player. He's only 18 years old going up against the 32-year-old uh, well, current champion, Ding Loren. So uh, I have a game here that they played in 2024. And uh, I couldn't find many games that they played against each other. I think there were only about maybe three times that they went up against each other, and this is the most current game, which was a draw. Uh, but it should be interesting to take a look at and maybe give us a glimpse of what we might see in the up upcoming World Chess Championship, which will be uh, 14 games uh, at a long time control. Uh, and then if there's a tie after those 14 games. Uh, well, then they will go into rapid games and blitz games. Uh, the time controls will increase in speed uh, for the finale until there's a tie break. All right. So let me run the analysis here and see. Uh, well, on this game review, pretty incredible game. Ding Loren played at 96.9% accuracy versus 966 by his opponent. Uh, and we see the game was almost uh, even the whole way. Something happened here with a, a little bit of a bump uh, where it looks like White got a slight edge before the game was evened out again. Uh, and both players played at a 2950 rating level. Uh, if I move my image here, you can uh, see that down below here. Uh, and uh, let's see what else we can learn uh, from this game. So uh, it looks like as far as brilliant moves, Ding Loren had two brilliant moves and four great moves versus one great move by his opponent. Uh, no blunders. Um, let's see here. There were no inaccuracies, one mistake by each player. So let's check this out. Um, I turn on the analysis and the computer can assist us here. So with the white pieces, Ding Loren plays E4, uh, a good attacking opening move. E4 tends to lead to more open positions. Uh, but no matter what you open with, the game can uh, you know, be steered into a more strategic game uh, or more tactical, depending how you follow up. So e5 is played by Gukesh, uh, evening things up in the center. And now knight to f3, uh, a good opening move, which directly attacks this pawn uh, and, you know, forces black to make a decision on what to do here. And so he defends developing a knight as well. So the game continues with bishop, uh, bishop to c4, and we have the Italian game here. And Gukesh responds with bishop to c5, the Gaioco piano game uh, in the Italian. And this usually leads to uh, more calm uh, waters here. The game's usually not as um, tactical. Uh, and the Gaioco Piano is known to be a quiet chess game. So let's see how it continues. We have castling here. So already white has developed two pieces, got his king to safety, and moved his rook closer towards the center uh, where it can you know, participate in the upcoming action. And now uh, the other knight is developed. And usually you want to develop your knights before bishops uh, because they're almost always well placed on uh, the f6 and c6 squares for black and for white c3 and f3. Uh, so, oh, and also by developing your knights first, 
uh, that allows you to have more time to see where you want to place your bishops as the game develops. Uh, now they've already developed one of their bishops, but in this opening, uh, these are the bishops are well placed here, helping control valuable real estate in the center of the board. So uh, now we have you know a pretty symmetrical game occurring here. Uh, the pawns in the center are fortified by the d pawns here, and now. Uh, a common theme in the Italian game, pushing this C pawn to C3 with an idea of a future push uh, possibly to D4 here. And the D pawn uh, would be backed up by the C pawn, you know, in case it were captured. So the game continues with A5 and Gukesh grabs space on the queen side here. Uh, and also, you know, this prevents or discourages this move here uh, of pushing the b4 pawn because then it can just be captured. Uh, so, you know, if that a5 pawn move were not played, well, then this pawn could just push forward chasing the bishop. So now we have uh, rook to e1, and the computer says that's the best move uh, because with the rooks, you usually want to place them uh, behind pawns that you've pushed forward uh, in case you're able to push them you know even further forward in the future uh, and you know if there are no open or half open files to place your rooks on well then the next best thing is to place them behind pawns that have moved forward or behind pawns that you plan to press forward all right so we have castling by black and h3 is played. Uh, so a defensive move here, preventing this bishop from pinning the knight to the queen. And the game continues with the bishop developing the e6 here. Uh, because this h3 move limited the scope of the bishop, it can't go here or here. Uh, so, you know, this is probably the next best spot. Although, uh, what does the computer recommend? Instead, bishop to a7, retreating this bishop uh, and kind of you know, playing a waiting move. But in the game, we have bishop to e6 and the bishops are attacking one another. So uh, what happens here? It looks like Ding Loren wants to avoid trades, keeping more pieces on the board, and by doing that, it gives him more possibilities and more of a chance to win, because as you exchange off more and more pieces, uh, the game slowly goes closer to a draw. So now we have the possibility of maybe capturing this knight and doubling the pawns uh, and leaving a weak, isolated A pawn. So what does... Gukesh do here. He ignores that, dropping back uh, with this bishop, and now we have Ding Loren developing his bishop. So once again, bishops confront one another, and we have a capture here. The computer says this is best. So what happened after this trade? We have a bad bishop. If we go back, this uh, black bishop here on the dark squares is what's known as a bad bishop for you beginners out there because all of these pawns in the center are on the same colored squares as this bishop and it limits the mobility of this bishop. Whereas this is a good bishop here for white because the pawns in the center are on the opposite colored squares. So Gukesh is happy to trade off his bad bishop for white's good bishop, and the rook captures here, not wanting to capture uh, with the pawn, although that's a possibility, uh, because that would pull this pawn to the center uh, and help fortify the center, and maybe leave an open or half open file uh, for a rook. But because that rook has already moved uh, to the E file, Ding Loren captures with the rook and avoids doubling pawns. So now we have the knight retreating, uh, avoiding a trade here that would kind of wreck the pawns on the queen side. And finally, uh, this thematic 
pawn push to d4 where it's backed up uh, by this c pawn. And so uh, that push is ignored in favor of pressing a knight forward here uh, and over towards the king side. Maybe the knight can jump in here uh, and put a little bit of pressure on the king side. Um, and now we have a bishop retreat. So now if the knight jumps here, uh, the pawn will be able to push forward attacking the knight and this bishop will protect uh, this bishop, or excuse me, this pawn that the knight would be putting pressure on. So uh, this you know, forward movement by the knight is ignored in favor of immediate action in the center. And the computer actually recommends h5 here, gaining space on the king side for black. Uh, but we have the pawns confronting one another. So a lot of pressure building up here in the center. And a lot of beginners, they kind of panic when the pawns are fighting each other like this. And that's when mistakes can be made where the pressure is building up in the center and a lot of pieces and pawns are attacking each other. And you know, beginners have a tendency to just capture and relieve this pressure in the center uh, when maybe a better move would be to just build up more pressure uh, with more pieces attacking. So what does Gukesh, uh, well, excuse me, what does Ding Loren do here? He does not relieve the pressure in the center. Uh, he plays the best move, developing another piece off of the back rank, which is uh, an important goal uh, in chess is to just develop your pieces off the back rank as fast as you can and get them towards the center where they can influence uh, these most important squares here uh, in the center of the board. So the game continues with finally a capture by the knight and apparently this is the best move. Um, you know it immediately attacks the knight here uh, and then that is ignored in favor of a counterattack, and the computer says that uh, capturing with the pawn would have been better. Uh, but you know this is still an excellent move, and the game is pretty close here. You know it's still pretty even. White has a slight edge, so we have capture, and it looks like liquidation uh, in the center of the board. Pieces are being traded off. Uh, white has gained some space. Uh, on the king side and a pawn, or excuse me, king side pawn majority of four versus three, whereas uh, Gukesh has a pawn majority on the queen side of four versus three. So, how will this game continue? We have rook to g3 lining up on the king here, uh, you know, potential threat here, maybe bringing the queen up here and threatening a mate in one. So the game continues with the unopposed pawn in a pawn majority pushing forward. So this is usually a good idea, uh, but the computer says it is a mistake here that jumps the game up uh, to over plus one in favor of white, whereas king to h8 uh, getting out of the line of fire of this rook here. Uh, it looks like that would be the best move, but white would still have an edge there. Uh, what does this move do? Uh, well, you know, it could create a passed pawn here. Um, it kind of frees up the uh, center of the board for this bishop. You know, maybe in the future the bishop would move here uh, and try and control this diagonal. So the game continues with queen to h6, the best move, threatening a mate in one here. So, you know, the pawn is pushed forward, blocking that threat. And now the bishop lines up here, uh, aiming at the king side. And this is a mistake uh, that evens the game up. So the game is perfectly even after this move. It looks like instead rook to e1 would have been better, centralizing this piece. And, you know, even the best players 
make that mistake sometimes of going for an attack uh, before they have all their pieces developed. You know, especially beginners make that mistake where they bring, uh, you know, just a few pieces up for an attack instead of developing everything before they start attacking. So we have the bishop mistake here, aiming, you know, at this diagonal trying to put more pressure on Gukesh's king side here. So the game continues with a great move here. C4 immediately attacking this bishop. So what does the bishop do here? Well, the bishop jumps to E3, or excuse me, E4, the best move in the position. Uh, and now we have a passed pawn here, a protected passed pawn, which can be very dangerous in the end game. Uh, so, how does the game continue? Well, uh, we have a brilliant move played by Ding Loren, sacrificing his bishop here, opening up lines uh, to the king side, uh, and now we have capture, Rook captures another brilliant move. Uh, and after capture, which is best, queen captures. And the game will go down uh, to a draw here because the king cannot do anything. Uh, the king could not escape over here because of the queen. And so now the queen can just move back and forth, uh, chasing the king until there's a draw by repetition. Uh, which is what happened uh, in this game. After 28 moves, we have a draw. So, you know, is this a glimpse of what may occur in the upcoming World Chess Championship? Uh, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it should be very interesting. Now, of course, uh, this game was played, uh, I believe, back in August, so not too long ago. And, you know, at this time, both players uh, knew that they would have to face each other in the upcoming World Chess Championship. So maybe they didn't play uh, at 100%. Maybe they were holding back a little bit, not wanting to reveal too much uh, to their opponents. So, you know, the result here is a somewhat quick draw, 28-move draw here. All right. Well, I hope you found that interesting, and I'm excited. I hope you are, too, for this upcoming World Chess Championship, which will start on uh, November 25th. Uh, so that's coming up very quickly here. Gukesh Damaraju, I hope I pronounced that correctly, of India, the 18-year-old challenger against Ding Loren, the current 32-year-old World Chess Champion from China. So should be a very interesting matchup. Uh, feel free to leave any comments and let me know what you think, uh, who you think will win this World Chess Championship. Uh, and also, please like and subscribe to support the channel if you haven't already. So thank you for watching and have a super chess day.